Telangana Regional Council will be discussing the following aspects. What are the aspects? Like, it is a decision making body on some subjects. First, planning and development. Why planning and development? Because Telangana as a region which is talking about discrimination or bias by the Andrites in the past because of Mulki and many things we can see. So now Telangana wants some safeguards. Planning of Telangana should be done by Telangana people. Development in region, in the region, in districts should be decided by the Telangana people. This is what they thought. Now itself I am talking about one thing. Telangana movement, when we talk about Telangana movement, we always talk about Nilu, Nidhulu, Niyamakalu. Water, resources and employment. Water, resources and employment are just physical aspects. Above all, there is another aspect, a democratic aspect, which is a political concept that is self-rule. We have to rule ourselves. Whether we are poor or rich, it doesn't matter. We have to rule ourselves. I am poor, so you come and rule, no one will tell in this world. That is the basic concept of democracy. So here also, planning and development. Who has to plan the development of Telangana? Telangana people has to plan. The representatives of Telangana should plan. That is why Telangana, when you have already doubts on the other party before merger itself. So what we are talking about is the planning and development should be done by Telangana Regional Council. And second plan is, second aspect is irrigation. Because when they were meeting fuzzily, when they were meeting, uh, when they were meeting, States Reorganization Commission, uh, Commission SRC, Fazal Ali, they were representing about the dams like Nandikonda and Kushtapuram, which are Telangana projects. They said, we may not get better deal under the unified Andhra Pradesh. So, irrigation will be dealt by TRC. Next aspect is agriculture and related schemes. There is a huge gap. Actually, Telangana and Andhra has a huge gap in many aspects. Agriculture in Andhra completely developed under canal irrigation by British policies and different story. In Hyderabad state, you have a different story to tell. Geographically also, it is a semi-arid region. You have tanks, you have minor irrigation projects, you have wells and you don't have big canals. Whereas Andhra has canals. From Sir Arthur Cotton, you can see the canal irrigation has become the major aspect, major source of income, major source of richness in Delta region. In Telangana, since Kakatiya ages or Shatavana ages, we can see we were completely dependent on tanks, wells, because this is the plateau. Canal irrigation is supplementing only. So in this entire scheme, agriculture is also developed in a different mode. So agriculture should be dealt by TRC. Next, industrial development, the same thing. We have two paths of development. And if you merge into Andhra Pradesh, we may not get the perfect deal. So industrial development. Then employment. No need to talk about employment. Employment is the main and major and only and the biggest problem always in the issue of Telangana. Always we talked about employment. You can take any period, any moment. Beginnings of every moment has the beginnings in employment issue or education issue. So employment is very important. So employment will be discussed, employment will be decided how recruitments will be done by TRC. This is what we have decided in gentlemen's agreement. Then local self-government. Local self-government means the municipalities or local bodies, village level administration, all these things will come under TRC purview. Public health, sanitation, local hospitals, dispensaries, primary and secondary education, regulation of admission to the educational institutions. All these things were, disc were kept under TRC. Then prohibition. What do you mean by prohibition? <laughs> prohibition means liquor prohibition. Complete prohibition means ban on the sale of liquor. This is prohibition. In Telangana, you have lot of excise income on liquor. In Andhra, there were periods when liquor was banned and there is less income on liquor. So there is an apprehension or there is always a debate about the issue of liquor with, with Telangana and Andhra. And Andhra, it's actually, they heckled and they used to tell that Telangana is rich because you boost more, you drink more and because of liquor income, you are a rich state. 
it is not true liquor income excise department perfectly organized that is why liquor income is perfect it's unlike andhra state and here prohibition is a topic already it was on the debatable point always there are they, this is in 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 the society because of gandhian principles and many things liquor prohibition is always on the agenda that is why today also if you see the department of excise is known as prohibition and excise it is not just excise department prohibition total prohibition is the main goal according to constitution so prohibition is always there in that then sale of agricultural lands what do you mean by sale of agricultural lands our agriculture lands are rich under project areas when nizam has started construction nizam sagar dam and nizam sagar came into existence lot of people were called in and came in to nizam sagar area so wherever you have you see in telangana the rent the rate of the land is very less price is very less and in andhra you have huge so the if you sell one acre there you can buy 10 acres here so when the influx is happening happening into telangana state what will happen telanganaites will lose their land and many of the non telanganaites like andhras will come and settle down so trc will see or regulate the transaction of agricultural lands this was the main provision in this then cottage and small industries it is dependent on your rural economy so all these topics were kept under the purview of trc trc will decide on these matters council will decide on these matters this was part of the gentlemen's agreement <laughs> next what is the composition of trc trc is a body with 20 members nine legislators from telangana district six mlas nine legislators from telangana districts these nine will be representing each one district six mlas are mps from telangana to be elected by the telangana legislators nine mlas each representing one district okay nine then plus six these six will be elected from mps or mlas from telangana who are representing telangana these six will be elected by the telangana legislators so total 15 then next five five non legislators elected by the telangana mlas so total 20 so these 20 people will be the members and all the ministers from telangana region shall be the members ministers from telangana region they are the people who are representing telangana's interest in the cabinet so they will be the bridge like people between the trc and the cabinet you discuss something in here trc and that will be taken into cabinet so that is why all the ministers de facto will be the members in trc and cm or deputy cm cm chief minister or deputy cm whoever is from telangana will be the chairman of this trc we will talk about the df cm or deputy cm provision in the next condition and cabinet ministers can be invitees they are not members invitees for example you are talking about one particular department you are discussing about one particular department you can invite that particular cabinet minister so that you can have a much more better deliberations and take decisions so they are invitees and this trc arrangement will be reviewed only after 10 years this is the provision in gentlemen's agreement so for 10 years trc should be there unfortunately what has happened trc as council did not come into existence it came as committee and nothing was happening with all these things only a few things could be done under trc so next points under gentlemen's agreement about the cabinet see when you are merging this region with andhra region the next cabinet the shape of the cabinet the composition of the cabinet the essence of the cabinet should be representing both the areas if there is an imbalance the cabinet cannot justify this merger that is why first point is in the cabinet 60% will be from andhra 40% from telangana this is based on the proportionate population 60% from andhra 40% from telangana in this 60 take andhra separately and rayalaseema separately definitely it will be lesser 
but 60 because this 60 is part of Madras province and this is Andhra state. So, 60. Then at least one minister from Telangana shall be a Muslim. For example, there are 10 ministers, 6 from Andhra and 4 from Telangana. Among 4 also, at least one should be a Muslim. Why this provision? This is to pacify, this is to uh, assure the Muslim people or Muslim minority in Andhra Pradesh because they were getting all the plumpos and they were happily in the court under Nizam. But after Nizam, under Jairin Choudhury or Vellodi or again coming to Andhra Pradesh, if they are getting a raw deal, they will be sidelined. It is not good for democracy. So, Muslim representation was guaranteed through this point. So, out of the ministers in the, from Telangana, one should be a Muslim. This was the condition. And again, important portfolios and division. For example, there are some portfolios which are not considered as so important. Every department is important. But some departments are more important like home, like revenue. Home is related to land order. You can control the whole state. Revenue controls the finances of this state. So, some departments like home, finance, revenue, planning and development, commerce and industries. These five departments are crucial. The agreement says out of these five departments, two ministries should be allocated to Telangana people. Means out of five, two to Telangana means all these five. How they were violating such provisions, we will see. For example, you take, they have given revenue, one of the important ministry, revenue to a person like V.B. Raju. Very interestingly, V.B. Raju is, though he is, rep he is representing Telangana, he is not a pure Telanganaite. He was a settler here. So, automatically giving the portfolio to V.B. Raju, they could dilute all the aspects of revenue in the future that we will see when we discuss violations. So, last point about the cabinet composition, either CM or deputy CM should be from Telangana. The condition is if the CM is from Andhra, deputy CM should be from Telangana. If the CM is from Telangana, deputy CM should be from Andhra. This is another important aspect. Then, gentlemen agreements, other points are also there, which are not directly linked with the major aspects, but there are aspects like prohibition. Prohibition, we discussed this, this prohibition will be under the TR, purview of TRC. At the same time, prohibition, gentleman agreement clearly says, this prohibition can be decided by the legislators from Telangana only, not all. Not the entire assembly will decide about the prohibition in Telangana. Legislators from Telangana only will decide about the prohibition. This is one provision. Land transactions in Telangana was put under TRC to safeguard the interests of the agriculturists of Telangana. Otherwise, they will get alienated from the land. En masse. En masse means en masse. It is not just one or two instances. Lakhs of acres will be purchased by the other people if this provision is not there. That's what they have visualized, but still they violated. We will see how they were violated. Lastly, this is not related to the administration or the people or the state. This is related to the Congress party. This is the interesting aspect of Telangana's whole movement and gentleman's agreement. See here, gentleman agreement is talking about the people, administration and all those things is good. But what is the link between the party? A party can be there in the power or not. But they made one provision in Telangana agreement, the gentleman agreement about the existence of Telangana's party, Telangana's Congress committee to continue till 1962. Means though Telangana is merged with Andhra, Telangana Congress committee will be functioning separately as a body of the Congress and they will have their separate president, their separate council, separate committee and all those things. So, this provision they have made. You can see this. Though Andhra Pradesh was still unified in the last days of United Andhra Pradesh, Telangana Congress Committee was separated and Andhra Committee Congress Committee was separated. This was just exactly the mirror image of the merger period. Telangana Congress Committee was heading by, headed by Telangana people and Andhra Congress Committee was headed by Andhra people. This happened before 2014. The same thing here. Gentleman agreement, gentleman's agreement has a provision of party two because all the four members who are signatories 
are from the same party. All the four members of Telangana are from the same party. There is now much difference. So, this is related to the party. And coming to the other aspects. Other aspects includes the name of the state. What do you mean by name of the state? It is Hyderabad state till date. This is Andhra state. After the merger, what will be the name? Is it Telangana or Hyderabad or Andhra? So, in the deliberations, very interestingly, all these things they decided about the council, about the land transactions, they gave away. But they did not decide upon the name of the state. Why? Because they clearly understand that name of the state is also very important. Erase the Telangana identity itself from the essential aspect that is the basic name of the state. Telangana has proposed the name of the state should be Andhra Telangana. And Andhra has proposed that we do not want Andhra Telangana, but we want something else. And they have favored the Andhra Pradesh because when they have discussed about this Telangana state, uh, sir, when they have discussed about the unified Andhra Pradesh, in the select committee, after the proposals went to central government, they made some changes. Central government has given some new name, that is Telangana Andhra Pradesh. Telangana Andhra Pradesh was the name given in the select committee. And Andhra people said, why Telangana Andhra Pradesh? Just keep it as Andhra Pradesh. And Telangana name has been erased from the proposal itself before getting finalized. So, this is number one. Andhra favored Andhra Pradesh, who, which was discussed by central government and high court. Even today, we have this problem. Though the state is divided in 2014, we are in 2018 and high court is yet to be divided. Why always you have a problem with high courts? The same thing, if we go back to the history of Andhra state, high court was the riddle, high court was the puzzle, high court was the thorn in the formation of Andhra state. Prakasham Pantulu, Andhra's claimed that he was a staunch champion of Andhra cause and he was completely in favor of Madras High Court. And that was one of the uh, important contradictions in the formation of Andhra Pradesh. Because many advocates and the rich and many interests, landed interests or many political interests are associated with the high court too. That is why, though everything has been shifted, high court isn't shifted till date. For that, everyone is ready to have two high courts, but nothing moves forward. This is what we have to understand. And again, interestingly, you can see what has happened. Telangana people proposed the high court bench at Guntur. And the headquarters, since this is Hyderabad is the capital, there is no discussion about capital. Because Hyderabadis or Telanganites are ready for Hyderabad as capital. And Andhras are always trying to get Hyderabad as capital. So, there is no contradiction. There is no debate. There is no such a discussion or deliberation. It was assumed that Hyderabad will be the capital for United Andhra Pradesh. Because Bijavada Gopal already like stalwarts were saying that don't get apprehensions that we are eyeing on the beautiful city of Hyderabad. Even in the statement itself, he describes Hyderabad as a beautiful city. Because Hyderabad is infrastructurally developed and every way, all round development was there and ready-made capital for Andhras. So here, High Court is not such a case. High Court is purely administrative thing. So Telangana people, though they have proposed, they said you should have a bench, High Court bench in Guntur. But Andhra said, no, no need of any bench. Interesting thing is, they should have a bench. People will be suffering if everyone has to travel up to Hyderabad. Instead, they can have a bench in Guntur. High court bench Guntur means it will serve the people of Andhra region. But they didn't want. They wanted to have the high court in Hyderabad only without any bench. And Andhra Congress Committee agreed for the separate Telangana Congress Committee in 1960 till 1962 because it does not affect the interests of the Andhra ruling class because they understood both are there in the same Congress party. If at all there is a contradiction, there is central government or central cabinet or central party. Congress party president or central party will 
फोर्स द तेलंगा लीडर्स टू टेक ए डिशन इन फेवर ऑफ आंध्रास ओपीनियंस सो दे वर नॉट वरीड बट इन टर्म्स ऑफ नेम इन टर्म्स ऑफ हाईकोर्ट दे वर अडमेंट दे कुड नॉट डिसाइड एंड इट वॉज लेफ्ट अनडिसाइडेड एंड दीज आर द मेजर एस्पेक्ट्स वेन वी टॉक अबाउट जेंटलमैन्स एग्रीमेंट इन द नेक्स्ट चाप्टर वील बी डिस्कसिंग थ्रेड बेयर अबाउट द वायोलेशन वायोलेशन वर डन इन ए ह्यूज वे मीन्स यू कॉन्ट एक्सपेक्ट दैट each and every provision of gentlemen's agreement was violated there is nothing left for non violation and after the gentlemen agreement this gentlemen agreement is to remove the apprehensions and make some rules so that the next state which will be formed as a unified state will have the interests of both the parties safeguarded that is why we call all the points in gentlemen's agreement as safeguards remember this word you should say safeguards safeguards in gentle, gentlemen's agreement the agreement signed on february 20th was the instrument for the merger once you have a political unity in terms of this what will happen you, the next stage is reorganization of states in that process 1956 august 31st the states reorganization acts the states reorganization act 1956 was passed and with that andhra pradesh state has come into existence once the andhra pradesh state has come into existence burgula ramakrishna rao and the erstwhile hyderabad states legacy has been erased forever i am saying this as a political statement actually with the formation of unified andhra pradesh all the things which were done in the past need not be erased within short time but it happened why because since day one in telugu we use the word sira tadi araka munde means even before the uh, ink which is on the paper is soaked we started violating it sira tadi araka munde manam dani ulanginchadam modalu pettunnam we are we started violating it so in this process violations can be discussed thread bare in the next chapter but what was the apprehensions of the people though telangana got merged with andhra people are not so happy because people were not given the choice of taking a decision on merger it was a political discussion political because congress has monopolized the entire thing opposition communists are also in favor of merger so where is the role of the people that is why we say people always opposed merger 1952 they demanded separate state of hyderabad in 1952 to 1950 69 from 1952 to 1969 you had all the problems piling up in each and every aspect of gentlemen's agreement and that is why in 69 again we said jai telangana again in 2000s we started a movement again separate statehood it is not that people got convinced about telangana and merged with andhra pradesh it is because it is a political decision of congress and it got merged very interestingly because of the political decision of congress only again telangana state was formed though it is not the sole decision congress political decision to support telangana's formation is one of the important aspects for the formation of telangana so when we think about the uh, formation of andhra pradesh what has happened nehru clearly warned in his words we can see you have a huge responsibility on the shoulders what is the responsibility he said andhra leaders has huge responsibility on their shoulders you have to win the confidence of telangana this is what nehru said winning the confidence agreement will be on the paper but winning the confidence shows the sincerity and unfortunately there is 100% lack of sincerity in implementing gentlemen's agreement from day one as i said the basic aspects the important aspects like chief minister should be from one region and deputy cm from the other region for example if deputy cm is from telangana cm should be from andhra if cm is from andhra deputy deputy cm should be from telangana and this is the simplest thing which they could do 
there are eligible people like other employment aspects many times they said no eligible candidate so we did not take no eligible candidate that is why no jobs but here there is a stalwart like kv rangaredi who already served as a minister he could have been deputy cm but neelam sanjeev reddy who was the chief minister did not make any attempt to have a deputy cm post instead he heckled heckled and he said deputy cm post is like the sixth finger some people have the sixth finger by by birth they have the sixth finger all these five fingers have some responsibilities or duties but the sixth finger is not a functional one it just a rudimentary thing like our appendix the sixth finger do not have any work to do he compared the deputy cm post with the sixth finger then why you had the provision of sixth finger in your gentleman agreement and gentleman's agreement is signed by neelam sanjeev reddy he himself so this is the violation we'll be talking about the violations in a separate chapter and about the high court chief justice koka subbarao was the chief justice of andhra high court and he was instrumental in discussing about the high court formation in hyderabad so when we talk about gentlemen's agreement gentlemen's agreement has an important role in telangana debate since we have taken all the points which were signed by the leaders from telangana and andhra now what is the importance of gentlemen's agreement what should have been done what was not done what should have been done the gentlemen's agreement should have been implemented in toto because they have signed it because they made it as an instrument for the merger of telangana with andhra pradesh without gentlemen's agreement we could not we were not ready to accept the merger and gentlemen's agreement paved way it made assurances about the safeguards that is why telangana joined with andhra but what has happened in the course gentlemen's agreement was violated when we talk about gentlemen's agreement another important juncture in the history of telangana formation that is 1969 movement in 1969 movement when people were discussing about the violations and that is why we are fighting for telangana separate telangana again the whole cabinet resolved that they accepted and go number 36 they have issued and in the prelog uh, prelog itself prolog itself in the beginning itself they have accepted they have resolved said that gentlemen's agreement was violated completely that is why 1969 telangana movement so 56 gentlemen's agreement was violated till 69 and do you think this violation continued or discontinued after 69 since the cabinet has signed and said that yes violation was done no we will see in the due course 69 onwards again they have twisted whole arguments and gentlemen's gentlemen's agreement was the main issue in the entire discourse of telangana